E.T. Trivia tomorrow on 590 WARM Radio. All right, look who's here. Now, I'll try and do this as fast as I can, and we'll go back and, fix, and uh, fill in the blanks later. If you don't have a weight problem, you should be in church thanking God at this moment. Meet Stanley J. Dudrick, M.D. Dr. Dudrick is general surgeon, St. Luke's Episcopal Hospital in Houston, Texas. One of his patients happens to be Gail Hammond, a medical secretary. Gail, would you kindly stand for us for just, just for a moment? Uh, now we have a before of Gail. Would you be good enough to show him that, Ronnie? Uh, I'll tell you this. Gail, Gail uh, lost 58 pounds by what is called the gastric bending procedure. This is a reason, relatively new idea in surgery for those who suffer uh, from severe obesity. Uh, thanks, Gail. Uh, may we ask you <laughs> the inevitable question, what was your max? Do you mind telling me? 253 pounds. 253, and you're what? Five something? Five five. Mm -hmm. You didn't like yourself. No. Was this something you struggled with all your life, Gail? Yeah, since a child. You didn't realize that you had a problem. Did, was it your teacher that said that they were going to weigh all the kids? How that? In fourth grade, uh, we were all weighed, and I think I was eight years old, and I weighed 108 pounds in fourth grade. And there was only there were only two others, and that they were both boys. And right. <laughs> uh, and then you yo-yo, did you? You like everybody else? Yeah, just the the cycle that starts. Right. Did your folks nag? As a teenager, um, that's when they started saying that uh, if you want to accomplish anything in life, you're going to have to lose weight. Right. And then when you had a crush on a boy, you probably locked yourself in a closet and didn't eat anything and all that. Did you do that then? Um, somewhat. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess as a child, you, you have that problem. But uh, Ronnie, is it possible, do we have a visual that gives just a sense of the surgery that uh, Ms. Hammond uh, had? Uh, this is the surgery that is performed by Dr. Dudrick at Texas. Give us just a, what's going on here, Doctor? What you see there is the uh, normal stomach with a nasogastric tube in the stomach, and uh, the two hands are holding a double velour dacron band about an inch wide, which goes around behind the stomach in this particular view, and is then wrapped around much as a napkin ring or a belt comes around your waist and if we can see the next uh, slide here it is uh, suit the ends of the band sutured together with a small upper pouch that might be two or three ounces in volume and a larger lower pouch so that in essence what we've done is created an, an egg timer out of the stomach so that just as the little grains of sand or salt would go slowly through the egg timer uh, food will go slowly from the smaller upper pouch into the larger pouch, maintaining continuity so that all the food touches all the surfaces. And the point of the operation is to make such a small pouch that when this distends with a small amount of food... You're satisfied. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you are satisfying a smaller stomach. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you used to do gastric uh, bypass, did you not? Yes, sir, I did. Do you still? No, sir, I don't do gastric bypass anymore. We've evolved into this procedure, which we feel is uh, safer and more effective. Yeah, we've had some rather distracting uh, side effects to gastric uh, bypass, haven't we? Yes, sir, uh, there have been quite a few side effects. They're not as great as the original operation of uh, small bowel bypass or jejunal ileal bypass, which we've largely abandoned at this point. Right. But there are still some failures and some complications right. that we'd like to avoid with this procedure. Uh, Ms. Hammond, you've lost 58 pounds. Uh, can you eat ice cream? Yes. And what's different now? The difference is in the amount I eat. In other words, you're satisfied after one scoop now. Is that it? If that. Really? Oh, yes. <laughs> and uh, so in other words, your intake at all your eating occasions is, is less. Yes, three, four mouthfuls. Right. Uh, how it? about emotionally? Uh, uh, <clears throat> emotionally, I'm, I'm just thrilled because I'm getting what I want. Yeah. But you see, okay. But if if a lot of eating disorders has to do with what it is, what is suggested, uh, so if it's neurotic behavior, I'm not suggesting it was with you, but mm -hmm. it often is. Mm -hmm. I don't understand how does does anatomical satisfaction never uh, uh, satisfy it, that? It's a combination of of emotional and and physical, I guess, because when you're you're a compulsive overeater, you just eat. But now. As long as I eat a little bit of what I like, 
I'm happy. And now I'm eating more nutritious food than I did before. Okay. I feel like a proud father with a family here. Here's Pat <laughs> Patricia Havasi uh, joins us, a housewife. Guess what? She lost 81 pounds by hypnosis. You're really, really sold on it, aren't you? Yes, I am very much. What's, what was your story, uh, Patricia? As a, uh, you're a Detroit housewife. Um, you've been up to what? Uh, 196 pounds. Mm -hmm. uh, you're, you say your brother-in-law was insensitive to you? <laughs> I mean, I saw one of several. Yes, very you took much. Your, you so. took your hits then, did you? Oh, was yes, I did very much, and I felt I deserved it because I felt I failed. I felt my husband was ashamed of me. I didn't feel like he loved me, really, in a way. You're very insecure. Sure. I assume that you noticed your husband looking at other women. Oh, yes. <laughs> and they'd look back at me and they'd kind of sneer and, well, yeah. I felt terrible. It is. It must be a really, it, it just destroys your self-esteem, I'm sure. Yes, very much. You have no confidence. You don't feel like um, you're as good as other women. You look at another woman and you think, gee, I wish I could look like her. There you are. <sighs> This is some dramatic change. Wow. You have to uh, admire uh, hypnosis, huh? Yes. How many times do you have to go in other meetings? No. I uh, went uh, once. The first seven weeks, I lost 33 pounds. I went to Advanced Hypnosis Center in Southgate, Michigan. Right. And I talked to Mr. Norman Caldwell. Right. He st I begged him for a reinforcement. Get this. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'd done this well. I tried for seven years. Did you go, yo do all those things? You went N back and forth? Now, let me tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> I was afraid of regaining the weight. Yeah. This is, I mean, extremely afraid of it. Yeah. I asked him to help me. He had hypnotized me with spontaneous insights, okay? I know you're going to think it's crazy. No, no, hey. I'm okay. <laughs> we just report the news. We don't make it. We believe you. Go ahead. You make your point. I found out how diets caused me ha to have destructive behavior. Really? Number one, he puts you on a weight control program, not a diet. Right. You eat, you're not in a diet. They specify the amount of food. They specify the meals. Yeah. You lose the natural instinct, which tells you hunger from appetite. You don't know what you're preconditioned to eat. Uh -huh. They tell you you must follow the, the diet. It is chemically balanced. If you don't follow it exactly, you don't lose weight. I see. And the hypnosis helps you adhere to the... Yes, it right. raises your conscious awareness. Oh, okay, and I'm going to get back to you in just one second, but did, were you the guilt, uh, eat, guilt, lose, guilt, weight? I mean, I, did you have that cycle? The guilt was associated with the food that they restricted. I don't get that. Okay, they ha the first thing you see on a diet is what you can't have. There is an excessive yeah, amount of guilt associated with this oh, particular food. And it food. makes it more attractive, then. Yes, it does, yeah, undeservingly sure. so. Yeah, that's sort of like uh, all those sex lectures when we were in high school. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now wait a minute. Uh, let me get my act together here. Now I want you to meet Joanne Temple. Now don't leave me, Mrs. Havasi, because we're coming back to you. She's a housewife and apartment manager. You ready? You want, we have a picture? There it is. This woman has lost 241 pounds by dieting. <laughs> From El Reno, Oklahoma. Come on, Joanne. You didn't go to meetings or you no know, surgery, nothing? Come on, what are you doing? What well, you do? I, I had bypass surgery back in 72 and I weighed 426 pounds. It was when the first bypass surgery came out and I was the fourth one to had it, but I was just as big as ever. I lost 60 pounds the first year. And after that, I just kept getting bigger and bigger. And then in 1980, I um, had problems with my heart and I went to my doctor. He told me if I wanted to live and enjoy my family that I better lose weight. I started losing weight and I've made up my mind and I'm happier now than I've been in my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> What did you have for breakfast this morning, Joanne? I had a poached egg and a half a grapefruit. 
on Phil Donahue. <laughs> <laughs> You're a cheap date, Joanne. <laughs> but yeah, that's a, that's a that's a lousy sounding breakfast. Joanne. Tastes pretty good. Don't want to gain no weight while I sit here. But I don't understand. How did you do this just by willpower? Well, I just thought I went to my doctor and he put me on a 1,200-calorie diet, and I stayed on it, and I'm still on it. <laughs> what happens when you get off? And then uh, in 1982, I had so much skin, it hung to my knees, and I went and had cosmetic surgery, and the skin that they'd taken from my stomach was 12, uh, was 12 pounds and 21 inches long. <laughs> uh, do you still have the bypass, I have a physician ask? Yes, I sure do, but I, I'll gain if I don't really diet. Mm -hmm. And how are you doing uh, otherwise? The bi did the bypass had its consequence for you? Did it not it, physically? Uh, did you have stones by any chance? Kidney uh, stones? No, but I had gallbladder uh, a surgery back in 72, and then my doctor just went ahead and did the bypass at the same time. But okay. I did, that was the fourth patient that had ever had it there in uh, Reno. Okay. Now, guess who's here? <laughs> a friend of the family from Addison, Illinois. Here is Agnes Belushi. Yes, she is John's mother. And yes, she's had, she's had a long year to be sure. And uh, had more pain than, than, than her, mm -hmm. certainly her fair share. But you look like $12 million, and you're here to talk about something much more. Cash. <laughs> uh, uh, Agnes, you, had, uh, you lost 143 pounds intestinal bypass and stapling. They both at the same time, and I've helped me out here. I have to understand. No. Uh, Twelve years ago, I there had you were. intestinal bypass. How, uh, how long ago is this, Agnes? Uh, about, I don't know, about, uh, well, must have been 11, about, no, let's say 12, about 13 years ago, just before I had the uh, operation. Yeah. All right. Now, so what, what uh, you really just, you were miserable, weren't you? Oh. Miserable. I didn't want to live anymore. I just came to the point where I said, I've got to do something. My cousin worked at the hospital, knew Dr. Kane, and he, she, she said, Agnes, why don't you go see Dr. Kane? Maybe he can help you. Yeah. Did you have to use two seat belts on the airplane? Yes. That was terrible. Yeah. I got on there and I couldn't fit, so the, the, the stewardess brought me another belt. They had to have two of them. I was ashamed to go anywhere on the plane because of that. Yeah. Um, now, excuse me, but I, I might have missed something here. Hmm. Just trying to focus. Intestinal bypass and stapling, was this one procedure? No. No. You had intestinal bypass first. Seven years I had that. I, I, after I had that, seven years later, I had the reversal and then I had the stomach staple. You didn't, the bypass what? Did you, just, you, were, you had complications, did you? I, ha I, got, I developed a calcium kidney stone, which was an after effect or something to do with it. It builds yeah. up calcium, I think, in your body. I'm, I don't know the medical part, but I do know that they said that could be the cause of, for my operation. You lost 143 pounds. Um, now, you go to Dr. Kane, who probably has seen your uh, situation before in other patients. You're a general surgeon from Mount Prospect, Dr. Kane. Um, she came in and what, presented with the usual uh, uh, after effects of, of bypass? Yes. And initially, she had a small ball bypass. And then when she developed some of the metabolic complications that can be associated with the bypass fall, right. it was necessary to take down the bypass. Now, the problem with taking down the bypasses is that these patients often had changed their entire life. They've gotten married, they had families, they've gotten jobs, and they knew that if they had their bypass taken down, they'd very possibly balloon again. They'd balloon again. It would, it would, it would just, as many of them said, it'll blow everything that's, that's important to me. Right, and they, they, so, they've known the joy of being thinner. That's yeah. right. Okay. So the beauty of, this, of the uh, gastric stapling procedures developed we had an alternative to them. Now we can say, look, we will take down your bypass. You won't regain your 150 pounds. Yeah. We can do that. And so when we took Agnes's uh, small ball bypass down to rid her of these potential complications, right. then we could go ahead and uh, staple her stomach. Okay. You want to use your pots and pans here and tell us what's going right. on? Can I do this? this Are you, can, can you imagine going into surgery in OR with us? <laughs> Good morning. We're glad to have you here. And remember, <laughs> You are in the reclined position, <laughs> and I am standing over you with this thing. Um, okay. Well, if you're going to aim there, there, then we could load it very quickly. Yeah. Uh, can we demonstrate this yes, thing? Yes. No, all right, let's quickly. do it. Why, sure. uh, first of all, you better give us an anatomy lesson here, Doctor. Well, when, when uh, Agnes had her small ball bypass, that was down in the intestine itself. Yeah. You have 25 feet of intestine, and they re made rearrangements of those intestines. Just one sentence about the small ball bypass. It's still done in certain areas of the country today. 
The good thing about it is, it showed that there was a problem. These people who prior to this time had no place to go, many of them wouldn't go to the doctors for right. any reason whatsoever, they had so many medical problems. Yeah. When the small bowel bypass came along, they get them out of the woodwork. Yeah. But then these other procedures came by and were superior to it, and it was upgraded. Now, I'm going to sound real stupid, but that will not surprise our audience. <laughs> to, what, to what feature of our intestinal system does the food product go first, the large or the small bowel? Small bowel. And it goes to the small bowel after exiting the stomach? That's correct. Okay. So the food then, as it, manuf as it metabolizes and becomes part of us, and then also develops waste for expulsion, it goes through the small and then the large. That's correct. And, and Agnes had a small bowel bypass. Okay. In the small bowel, Phil, you absorb your nutrients. And so what you really create is a, is a, a malabsorption syndrome. And this is something that, while it, it had a good effect, it also had numerous side effects. And now most of us haven't been doing that in the last 10 years or so. Right. We've gone on to other so procedures. So the small bypass really was intended to prevent the body from absorbing as it normally would the nutrients of the food so you don't get fat. That's I correct. get that. Okay. So now what? So then we went to the idea of making a smaller meal to the patient. And so when Agnes' the small bowel bypass was down, if this was a stomach fill, you see a row of staples. Now where's the stomach? Faster. Well, this would, this would be the stomach up to here. Right, going, and this goes into the it small bowel. Yes, and this, okay. is, this is the esophagus where the food is brought I in. I get it. And so, so, you, so when the food then enters this area, you are more readily satisfied with a smaller That's amount right. of food. You, now, I assume there's, a, there's an exit here. You've got a stomach. That, that is the exit right there. Right on the edge Very here. small. You've sized their meal is what you've done. You, you've given them a very small meal. Uh -huh. And they get, the, they, they have the sensation of yeah. being full. Let yeah. me load that full, and you can do I that, can't. right? <laughs> I'll tell you. Right now. Mm. <laughs> this hurts me just listening to this the thing. Load it, huh? <laughs> All right. Sure. We can put that right in there. Okay. And Phil, then you can, you can do that yourself right here. And then I'll get my certificate from the American <laughs> College of Surgeons. <laughs> well, now, is this actually how you do it in OR? Uh, essentially, this is it, Phil, and I'll just crank this down here, and then you can go ahead. Wait we're ready here. Ronnie, you got a tight shot here? Is this going to be difficult? There you go. Uh, I'll just, wait, just one second, Phil. We have to just, just close the gun. Maybe you, if right. whatever size stomach you'd like this woman to have, Phil, you can okay, arrange we're it. we're going to give her a little <laughs> bigger stomach. All right. Give her a little more room. All right. All right. All right. Uh, is this how you actually do it, huh? Essentially, this is how we do it, Phil. Now, I assume this, you're, you better have a general anesthesia for this, right? <laughs> well, it's, it's best. It's oh, best, uh, yeah. Why don't you just go ahead and squeeze it? All right. Here we go. Just squeeze it tight. Ready? Just uh, squeeze it tight. <laughs> is that it? That's it. Ah! Oh. <laughs> Okay. All right. Testing one. <laughs> now, please. I'll just open this up. Okay. Cockeyed you stomach. Be, uh... Okay. Now, I just have to apologize for the patient though I get my hardware out of the... Oh, I didn't release now. <laughs> there you go. We're all right. Maybe I didn't pull far. Okay. Mm. Well, that's the way they're doing it, friends, in the wow, old operating quick. room today. Is that all the longer it took yeah. you to do mine? Yeah. <laughs> it took me 25 years to learn how to do it. Let me just, let me just, uh, let's get this straight now. You're doing, uh, this, this is the stapling, and Dr. Dutterick is doing banding, yeah. whereby he is on the outside of the stomach, take one, on the outside of the stomach, squeezing. So, what's, what's the difference? What are the, what's the long-term consequence of each procedure? Now, this isn't for everybody, but let's understand that there are people out there whose lives are miserable because of their weight. Better believe it. Well, uh, so that has been updated now to this procedure. Now, if you notice, we, we, we made the, the, the pouch a little smaller, and I'll just hold this one up to show you that the, the opening now Now, wait a minute, we had it this way. All right. all right. The opening, instead of now, being on the, what we call the greater curvature is now on the lesser curvature. And if you got, you see, you see the difference? So the food enters here, <coughs> That's and you're yeah. satisfied as it begins to, yes. uh, the volume begins yes. to. Mm. Now, the finished model, Phil, would go here. Now you see that staple line is oversewn, and this is one of the problems that people, I'm sure, will ask. I've heard of somebody staple. Oh, you do this up. band too? And then this little band goes on it. And that not only sizes the stomach, it secures the staple line, and it controls the outflow of that stuff. Right. And that's, this is the current finish model. Right, because this stuff does break down. I presume that the body fights this. This will become more elastic and absorb more food after a while, right? Yes, yeah, so that's correct. 
So as your operation ages, the more post-op you are, the more likely it is you're going to continue to take increasing amounts of food before you're satisfied. These people are off are continually testing their operation. Yeah, incidentally, this is actual size. Is this how big my stomach is? Uh, very close to it. Very so, close to it. Yeah, that's a little less than a six pack there. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, do you mind showing us just before we not break here, Doug? Not at all. Uh, give us your uh, little. Now, this is banding. Okay, you, what you want we, to... if you'll hold this up, Sharon, sure. to uh, Always show the stomach. This, and this has, sorry, uh, sorry. This has a nasogastric tube into the stomach as a sizer. And uh, what we literally do is use... What do you mean a sizer? This is, you the, put this in for the surgery, is that it? We put that in through the patient's nose down into the stomach, and uh, that's after they're asleep, of course. And, uh, and many of you, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm taking a number eight Cooley double velour graft. As in Denton Cooley? As in Denton Cooley. I shouldn't be surprised you're from Texas. Yeah, Go ahead. Well, we work in the same hospital and right. are very good friends. He. He has uh, helped develop this graft, which has ha which has a track record of being tolerated in the body with uh, very little bad reaction. And of course, this material is used to taking the pounding of blood pressure in so years and years and years. He fixes aneurysms with this, does he? Exactly, aneurysms or blockages of the of, uh, okay. of blood vessels. And he's got a good uh, non-rejection rate. That's there. exactly right. Okay, I got it. So what we do simply is to get around the stomach this way with this band, and we cinch it up, much as you would, as I say a woman putting or a man putting on a belt or, or a, a waist uh -huh. and after we get it to the size that we want it we simply put a series of sutures in to about six of them and tie these sutures over the size of this uh, nasogastric tube which is about uh, oh, about a half an inch in, in diameter ensuring the continued opening for the passage of the food product exactly yeah and ba by banding we don't have to worry about the stomach that's not stapled expanding into a larger right. opening over a period of time, which then causes the weight loss to be reversed a little bit right. and people get discouraged. Right. Now, how long? Then, how, I'm sorry, go ahead. So, then we cut the excess off. Right. How long post op do you take this out? The nasogastric tube, yeah. we can take it out in two or three days as soon as they, we detect with a stethoscope that the patient has bowel action or has a bowel movement. And uh, you're not concerned about uh, collapse, uh, where this might not be patent after you take it out? Um, I mean, how do you keep this from getting adhering the and, uh, yeah, or even closing up? Uh, well, it, it will maintain, there's no real reason for it to get any smaller. This okay, is let me a, take this out just to make a point. Mm -hmm. uh, you say two or three days after the surgery, mm -hmm. this comes out, and there you are. You're ready for the dance floor. <laughs> yeah. and, and you like your results, do you? Thus far, we've done this now for uh, between two and three years, and uh, we've been delighted with the first three dozen patients because we haven't had the uh, degree of failure rate so far. But with any new experimental procedure, we would like to have even more time. Uh, but the results, as Ms. Hammond has demonstrated here in just four months, uh, she was back at work in two and a half weeks. She eats what she wants. Really? And, uh, you notice it right away, huh? The difference. Oh, yeah. You can't help but notice that when you've been living a life of one constant splurge. And yeah. uh, you are four months following surgery. How much weight have you lost since the surgery? 58 pounds and 32 and a half inches. Yeah. Well, now, what do you think? We'll give you all a chance, and we'll be back in just a moment. From Chicago, you're in touch with Donahue. Today on Donahue, Phil looks at four different methods for severely obese persons, such as stomach stapling, hypnosis, and the traditional counting of calories. Butter. Betty Crocker's best just got butter. Creamy Deluxe, the one and only ready-to-spread frosting that has added real butter. With Creamy Deluxe and Super Moist, you and Betty Crocker can make someone happy. 
The trouble with having fruit and cereal is you run out of fruit and are left with just cereal. But that won't happen with Post Raisin Bran, cause Post packs three packs of plump, sweet raisins into every box and combines them with crispy bran flakes so you can get raisins in every spoonful. With Post, you won't run out of fruit. Post Raisin Bran, the fruit and cereal lover cereal. Look for the free milk offer on these fine Post cereals and pour half a gallon on us. Recently, in a small Italian town, a group of men gathered to try a ravioli their wives hadn't made. New Superiore ravioli from America. They were surprised to find it had a taste just as good as they were used to. When their wives joined them, they also admired the taste. However, they thought this new Superiore ravioli from America was perhaps best left in America. Superiore ravioli, now available in America. Abbott's Old Philadelphia Ice Cream, the special taste of yesterday. Want to know a secret? Come on! Mother is making ice cream. We use all kinds of good things. Rich, sweet cream, vanilla, strawberries, chocolate. Here, what do you think? And then there's our final touch. I know what it is. What? It's the honey. Right. Now you know all our secrets. Tell everybody you know. Old Philadelphia, the special taste of yesterday. I'd like to ask Mrs. Belushi's doctor, what are the um, risks of the, no, not the stapling, but the cosmetic surgery afterwards? I've heard that there's more risk in that than there is in the stapling. The cosmetic surgery. I didn't hear that. You mean moving, removing excess fat in the tummy? Right, the cosmetic surgery. Yes, I, I can give you the mortality rate for the stapling first. You might be interested in that. We've stapled over a thousand patients, and in this particular last model, we have done 300 of these. And our mortality rate has been an absolute zero. So it is a safe procedure in that respect, considering that we're often dealing with very morbidly obese patients with numerous medical problems. I I am not familiar with any problems as far as the as far as removing the excess skin is concerned. Let's get the patient. In. Excuse me, doctor. What, what do you think? Uh, how, how did you do? You say you had 12 pounds of skin removed from, from your tummy? Yes, a cosmetic specialist in Oklahoma City did it. I had some complications, and for a long time I didn't have any feeling in my stomach, but now I'm doing fine. I'm really happy that I had it done because I couldn't walk. <laughs> I'd like to ask a general question on how many men are having something like this done? It seems like mostly ladies are up here. 20%. 20% male? Is okay. that about right? About 15 and 20 percent male in our series too. Yes, ma'am. Do you have guidelines for how overweight you have to be before you'll accept patients? They're fairly well established. Fairly well established. We usually like the patients over 100 pounds. We like to have absolute indication they they try hard to lose weight on their own. What do you mean uh, over 100 pounds? Well, overweight. their ideal weight. If their ideal weight would be 150. When they're 250, I see. They're, so, so, be, so you're, you only, you're really only interested in patients who want to lose a hundred or more pounds, is your point? That's correct. I see. How about you, doctor? Yes, we have essentially the same criteria. Are, are each of these weight losses accompanied by a moderate exercise program in accordance with weight loss? We I have to you. walk two miles a day to keep up my my muscle tone. I was going to ask the lady who was hypnotized, did I understand her to say she only went to one session? I only went to, let's see, I went to one session. In seven weeks, I lost 33 pounds. Then I went to one session a month. In four months, I lost 70 pounds, okay? Is the surgery permanent, or do you have to go back and have something redone once you lose the weight? It is reversible, but I'll never have it reversed. I know myself well enough, I'll go back to eating the same way. And so I don't want to do that. You haven't changed her behavior at all, right? Oh, sure I have. But I'm you said you go yes. back to eating the same way, right? Yes, I if, would. If, she said, if, if I her. wasn't forced. I have got, with this surgery, it's called forced behavior modification. Okay. It's only been four months. I'm still learning how to control my desires and, and eat the right types of food. But I am. Yeah. But it's forced. What's, what's okay, the, I understand. What's the percentage <laughs> of reduction on this thing from 
what, what, is the, what is the volume of the average stomach? Uh, the average stomach will hold about a quart comfortably before you begin to feel full. But some of the stomachs that we've had in uh, some obese people would hold three and four quarts. Some could hold a basketball. Ooh. And uh, so you're really reducing uh, to about three ounces on the average. Right. So three ounces is you know, three shot glasses of food initially, but then that pouch is going to expand because it is elastic. Right. And so the capacity will increase, but will, it will only increase to a certain point and then it'll stabilize. But the stomachs with which you deal uh, for morbidly obese people are always considerably larger, is that true? In my experience, they've been considerably larger and they look more succulent and, and uh, thicker in terms of the mucosa. It looks more efficient. Uh, they look like they've been used pretty well. <laughs> well the patients, uh Eating due to frustrations, and could it uh, stop eating without uh, yeah. hurting themselves? I think it, it comes back down to the guilt eat guilt syndrome. Uh, you eat because you're frustrated, and you're frustrated because you eat. I'd like to ask the doctors, how do they determine that the patients won't lose too much weight after this procedure's done? We always tell our patients that wouldn't that be a nice problem, and we'd love to discuss it with you when it comes to that. If they really get down to that point, we have a lot of subtle things we can do that would, would reverse it without taking down the operation. And we'll be back in just a moment. Johnny Hugh will return in a moment. Don't move, honey. Here. I can't believe it, Mike. This is me not so long ago. Look at these lines. To me, you're still young. You know it's happening. Time for Pond's Dry Skin Cream. It plumps up dry lines so they seem to disappear and helps relieve dryness that can cause new lines to appear. My skin feels softer. Younger looking. Pond's Dry Skin Cream helps you stay younger looking. Under the silk pajamas. Under the lacy pillow. Under the designer sheets. Way down deep is a great night's sleep. The King Coil Posture Bond. The only mattress designed for comfort, for superb spine support, and endorsed by the International Chiropractors Association. Underneath it all is your good night's sleep. The Posture Bond, only from King Coil. Breadcrumbs. If you think they're all alike, you should taste breadcrumbs with imported Italian Romano cheese. You'll find this delicious Pecorino Romano flavor in 4C ready flavored breadcrumbs, along with parsley, onion, nutmeg, garlic, coriander, sage, and of course, breadcrumbs. If you think breadcrumbs are just breadcrumbs, taste 4C and taste the difference imported Italian Romano cheese makes. 4C, they're not just breadcrumbs. Keebler, what have we here? Soft cookies. Like them, Mom? They're brand new. We call them soft batch. You should. They're soft and chewy, like cookies right from the oven. You don't bite into these cookies. You sort of sink into them. Soft batch reminds me of cookies I baked when you were little. I'm an elf, Mom. I've always been little. <laughs> new soft batch. Peanut butter, oatmeal raisin, sugar, and chocolate chip cookies. From Keebler. So soft, they taste like they're right from the oven. Let me introduce a couple of other guests we've asked to come and be in our audience with whom you may wish to speak. June Malone joins us. You lost your weight. Let me get out of your way here, June. You lost your weight just plain old diet, huh? Well, I had professional counseling. Okay. 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 I had professional counseling, um, which helped me deal with the fear of getting thin. I was terribly frightened of being thin, even though I hated being fat. And um, the counseling is what got me started. And then I took on exercise programs and changed my lifestyle, my eating habits. Just like that, huh, June? <laughs> Why is yes it that, and no. <laughs> but, but you're the envy of, of so many viewers. They want to know what, what's your key. Are you just, do you have more willpower or what did it I don't think willpower has anything to do with it because everyone who is overweight has a lot of will to lose weight. Yeah. And there's no magic power involved. For me, it's been a matter of self-control 
and I couldn't have lost weight. People say, did you do it by yourself? And I want to say yes and no. I didn't go to um, any group or any professional um, organization that sells a program, um, but I did not do it by myself because I had my family and I had the counseling. Right. What did you have for breakfast, June? What did I have for breakfast? I had uh, some honeydew melon, um, a croissant, and a pecan roll. Wait a minute. You can't do that, June. <laughs> oh, I certainly can. How can you do that? That's the, there are people in this audience that would actually float away. Uh, uh, what I mean to say is they would look like a balloon if they did. I that. would too if I ate three or four pecan rolls like I used to, oh, I or if I ate a pecan roll every every meal or every day. I um, I allow myself um, those things every once in a while um, because once you like something, you always will like something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Would you kindly hand your mic to Scotty Walsh? You did. Uh, how much did you lose, Miss Walsh? Sixty-seven pounds. So you were what at max weight? 212. 212. Yeah. And you are now a model, is that right? That's your work. Boy, aren't you inspiring. <laughs> and how'd you... Thank you. All right, what's the secret, Scotty? Give us some free advice. I was just going to say, how do you think it makes that girl you saw in the blue dress up on the screen feel? To hear that applause, I... It's a great feeling, really, thank you. <laughs> what, um, this was a problem all your life, was yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, how old were you when you got to be, look like you wanted to look? I think I always had a problem with eating. I can remember my mother uh, talking to her friends in the living room and they would whisper, what's the matter with Scotty? I can't, why don't you do something? Uh, and uh, really, I was just a child. I was outgoing and interested in other things and never really uh, zeroed in on a weight problem. But in school, I was teased and sure. growing up. How much did you lose, Scotty? How, in total? Yeah. Uh, 67, but I, I think more than that. Uh, mm -hmm. I got fat from dieting. Uh, I yeah. agree. I really did. Tell me right. What do you mean? I would reduce my intake to the point where my body would crave whatever it was that I eliminated from the diet. I went on the diet, for instance, that you eat a pound of bacon and you drink quarts of water and, and then you lose. And I would begin to crave fruits and vegetables and, I guess, carbohydrates, mm -hmm. green things. Right. But so, it says here you do this by nutrition, so you better tell us what, what that means. I had a nutritional counselor, uh, a Dr. Jack Taylor in Arlington Heights, Illinois. <laughs> Bless him. <laughs> yeah. Um, I really went to him not to lose weight. I felt that I would always be fat. I'd had three kids and I just had given up. I just felt so awful. I couldn't walk around. I was without being tired and feeling <coughs> off. So I said, help, just help me feel better. Yeah. And the weight really began to come off as I learned to eat in a more healthful mm. way. What will you have for dinner tonight? Do you what know will I have for dinner? Capon. Roast capon. Um, Probably green vegetable. Uh, With butter on it? Not anymore. No butter. No, no oil. <laughs> you know what I had for breakfast? <laughs> yeah. A bran muffin, which uh, I make because uh, I can use the sweetener as a banana, a banana as sweetener right. instead but of What honey. do you do with the cravings and, and all I, that old behavior? I mean, how, I was still going to Yeah, that's what I'm going to talk about. Maybe and if somebody would like to help us with the maintenance. We haven't, uh, we haven't touched on that yet. And I have had a lot of trouble. Up, down, um, right. I'm down, yeah, yeah, help me. <laughs> All right. Well, here's uh, Vicki and Michael Wickler with time running out. Uh, I beg your pardon. It, it, you, you're here for, guess who they want to proudly boast of? Weight Watchers, true? Uh, what, what was the point you wanted to make about? Uh, oh, the whole idea of behavior modification, changing the way you feel about food. Here they are. The way you feel about yourself. Well, I'll tell you, that's something. Look at this. How much did you weigh there? I weigh 258 and a half. What'd you weigh, Michael? Uh, 312. And how long did it take you to do this? Uh, I lost my uh, 112 look, pounds. Look at this, Ronnie. Show, show. Let me see after. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> <laughs> I lost my 112 pounds in six months. I averaged a little over five pounds a week yeah. with the Weight Watchers program. Was she losing at the same time you were? Uh, she was losing, but she, she had, Vicki averaged three pounds a week. 
and she often said she'd put peanut butter in my coffee if I could. Yeah. Yes, go ahead. She can go ahead. Herself. Uh, one of the most frustrating things for women is that they lose weight much more slowly than men. And I'm sitting here eating my women's portions. Michael's eating his men's portions, and he's losing five pounds for my two and a half. But I did it. And so, I'm here to say it can be done and you can keep it off. It's been three years and two months. It doesn't for me. work for everyone, though. No, I'm it doesn't. I'm afraid to tell you. And they'll never blame the diet. It's always the individual. You eat what we tell you or it will not work. I've been to the meetings. There, but there's people, they blame the individual. Sometimes diets fail people. They're, I'm here to tell them that. I've tried to get an article published. Not one magazine will take it because I'm knocking diets. And I'm telling them just what it does. Because these specified plans, they're ruining. There are natural instincts. I've tried to help people. I say, how do you know when you're hungry? They tell me I get nauseated, I get a headache, my stomach growls, physical symptoms, the appetite's premeditated. I listen to my body. Diets, they, um, there's different sensibilities and tolerances That's the with truth. people. But there's Metabolism's also, different. Me. Activity let, levels different. Let Vicky in here but for a second. But there's also a difference between a diet and a food program. A food cr program that is ba nutritionally balanced, so that you're getting everything you need. And I'd just like to show you what's happened to me. May I? Sure. Go ahead. Size the, 52. This used to be your dress. Huh? Hmm. Yeah. Well, you have every right to be proud of that. I think. Uh, Don't miss Ms. Savese's point. She's very happy for you and all the others who have enjoyed the uh, success with the Weight Watcher program, and we're not here to suggest that anything is good or bad in all cases. I think you do make an interesting point, Ms. Savese, when you say that there are desperately frustrated people out there yes. who, who do appear to adhere, and you will always have somebody say, well, you say you did, but you didn't. It's got to be a very, very difficult it's thing. Very and you want to get people out from under this whole thing. Yes, and, because yeah. they think it's hopeless, and yeah. it's not. Yeah. Diets dictate to people. They don't teach them that there are other, there are other um, things that stimulate the appetite. They don't stop to think. They're so preconditioned to eat. Yeah. This happened to me. Norman Caldwell did help me realize it. Through Deprivation. Through hot hypnosis. Yes. All right. You're going to have to forgive me. Through, you have to forgive me for breaking. I, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Give this audience a chance. They want in here, and we'll give you that opportunity Good. in just a moment. <laughs> I quit. Yvonne, how do you do it? It isn't easy. After Morgan was born, my doctor told me I had oh. iron for blood. Now I protect myself, eat right, and take Geritol. It's great protection against iron for blood. Oh! Nice trip, Gladys. Can't sleep. Take Salmonex, too. You can't buy a more effective sleep aid. It has diphenhydramine, the non-prescription sleep ingredient most preferred by doctors. Advanced, effective Salmonex, too. Cadles TV is having a smoke sale at their East Northampton Street Wilkesbury store only. Some items have smoke damage, some have slight water damage, but all have a full factory warranty. Also, Cadles two-year warranty. All TV sets, all VCRs, all appliances, all specially priced. Sale starts Monday, September 10th through Saturday, September 15th. Cadles TV, Northampton Street store, open every night till 8 p.m. during this sale. Credit terms available, Visa and Master Charge accepted. If you're ready to move to the top, Northeastern Bank is ready to help get you there with our new top account. Our top account is a unique package of financial opportunities designed to make banking for you as simple and efficient as possible. Talk to us about Northeastern's top account package today. Northeastern's top account will help you come out on top. Oh. 
since 1937, Community Motors Kingston has been your authorized Buick dealer in Wyoming Valley and now offers the sporty Buick Skyhawk. The coupe and four-door sedan are available in both custom and limited trim with plenty of standard comfort and convenience equipment. The Buick Skyhawk, no matter how it's feathered, it lets you soar. Now's the time to get your Skyhawk. Community Motors is ready to deal. Mr. Goodwrench Service, a complete parts department, a modern body shop, and leasing are all available for you at Community Motors, 588 Market Street, Kingston. Coming up, how Scott Vale keeps the happy days coming as Charles in charge. He gets jokes out of normal everyday conversation. Next, Hollywood turns out for a screening of the newest comedy from Steve Martin and Lily Tomlin. And E.T.'s Where Are They Now? remembers TV Kitty Show star Pinky Lee. Then here she comes. It's a behind-the-scenes look at the Miss America pageant. Plus, a musical cruise with Billy Ocean's Caribbean Queen on Entertainment Tonight. <laughs> St. Luke's, and this is uh, Dr. Bedrick. Let me just, if you join us late, let me just uh, review for you. This is the stomach. Take my word for it. <laughs> That's right. All right. I flunked the matter. There it is. Uh, this is where the food comes, all right? And what uh, Dr. Bedrick is doing, along with colleagues, uh, is in a much more better way than this. He's actually banding, uh, along with the tube that goes in here, allowing for them the intake of food into a smaller area so that you're more you're 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 satisfied with a less amount of food intake and therefore you lose weight he's in the company of his patient gail hammond all right they're going to love me for that demo back in texas <laughs> uh, now here's what's happening in good old mount prospect this is dr king his work has to do with stapling mrs belushi joins us as a patient who has already undergone this surgery and is very pleased with it this is after a small bowel bypass which she didn't necessarily uh, it gives her a lot of discomfort and that was undone, and then they did one of these deals where you shoot the gun, <laughs> you just literally clamp it, and in effect you've got the same situation with food coming in here, and then you don't have to worry about all this space then becomes irrelevant in terms of satiation. Correct, that's right. Okay, let's go here. Yes, ma'am. Let's see how many we can get in. We've got all kinds of questions. Yes, ma'am. Well, um, I was wondering, I've been fat and thin all my life, and I think before people have to get into these drastic measures like surgery and, and uh, losing their health, don't you think that maybe the doctors could work with the school system and start when children are very young, first, second, third grade, to teach them yes, uh, the hazards of getting overweight? That would be very good. Yes, I agree. <laughs> what is the cost of these two surgeries? Absolutely. It depends to some extent upon whether the patient's had previous operations, uh, adhesions. Uh, generally, the base cost is about $2,000 for the operation and about $6,500 of hospitalization. And is it covered? Which is covered by insurance now. For the lady that was hypnotized, do they tell you you're not going to be hungry? Is that the kind of thing? That no. Happens? Okay. They tell you willpower doesn't have a thing to do with it. It increases your conscious awareness. They use something called positive imagery. I, I thought of how I wanted to look. Uh, sometimes repressing the appetite is a lot like repressing an emotion, okay? You use a positive con concept to help you, okay? <laughs> um, I was wondering, since the hypnosis method seems less riskier, uh, is it as effective as the surgery? and why isn't it publicized, and also, is any, have any studies been done about acupuncture? Okay. All right. Well, it's, it's an hour show, and you've got six questions then. I didn't quite get that. Uh, I think there are different strokes for different folks. Yeah. Uh, it's some things that work for one patient do not work for another. And I think you ought to progress from the simplest thing, which would be to voluntarily eat more nutritious foods in smaller quantities, which is obviously the ideal if you can overcome these tremendous neuroendocrine drives that we have to eat. You also have to know yourself. You've got to know whether or not hypnosis is going to work or if you're beyond that point. Uh, surgery was the only thing left for me. I tried 20 years. I tried hypnosis. I tried Weight Watchers. I tried them all. I knew I had to go to something drastic and that's the benefit of these surgeries. Some people can deal without them. I just wondered if any of them were on any kind of diet pills through all this? No. We did it all. 
No. We, yeah, we've done it before. Yeah. You tried it all. Everything, every diet we know them all. The mind is very powerful, people. Yes. I'm still very impressed with the fact you had a bypass. Okay. Yes. Back in 72. And, and you didn't like it? No, because I, I, lost, I lost 60 pounds the first year and just kept getting bigger and bigger. Yeah, but and you still have it. Yeah, I still have it. Too. What uh -huh. would one of you typically eat at a sitting? Like Very how much little. ice cream? Or? Well, see, I, I don't eat junk food that much anymore because I have to be careful because I can only eat three or four mouthfuls at a sitting. So I'm taking more nutritious food now and using more willpower than I did in the 20 years of dieting I was ever on. Yeah. The lady that was hypnotized, uh, how long did that take uh, for it to work for you? In, in four and a half months, I lost 70 pounds. I tried for seven years to lose this weight. He was my last resort when I went to him. I thought I was destined to stay that way. And I started to, um, with his method, it's different. It probably is too lengthy to get into. Did you people have to keep buying new clothes all the time? Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's wonderful. <laughs> for the lady That's that good. was hypnotized, was it expensive? No. He was only, for um, group sessions, it's $28. And you receive a tape. And for uh, going in alone, it's about 50 I think. Yeah. But he was worth it. Yeah. I just wanted to make a comment. I've lost 190 pounds, and that was on my own. You know, I mean, I was on diets my whole life, and it is willpower, and I've begun to... Yeah, but what happened? I mean, uh, what made you... I wanted to go out with girls. <laughs> <laughs> That'll get you motivated, everyone. We'll be back in a moment. <laughs> Johnny Hugh will return in a moment. I see you belong to a lodge. Pardon me? Your button. On your lapel. Oh! This is from the supermarket. Ah, uh, uh, sort of. <laughs> Actually, I got it for stacking stuff that's sweetened with 100% NutraSweet. This is their new symbol. It's very distinctive. Thank you. You're welcome. Look for a 100% NutraSweet brand sweetener. Why some things taste better than others. Honey, we're not using cotton no bathroom tissue ever again. <laughs> Something tells me I've been in this commercial before. I found a bathroom tissue that's even more cottony soft. Whatever could it be? More cottony softness than even cotton now. Excuse me, uh, Jihan, more cottony softness than cotton now? Uh-huh, it... Oh, uh, wait, uh, improved softer cotton now. Oh, well, guess. Introducing new Cottonelle. Of course, it isn't cotton, but it's the cottony softest ever. Stroud celebrates the grand opening of the new store in Stroudsburg with great values in both showrooms, like this Norelco triple header electric razor with self sharpening blades and pop out trimmer, just $22.97. Choose from a selection of Hellbro's analog quartz watches, values to $79.95, celebration day's price $29.88. Stroud's, the modern service catalog showroom, Wilkesbury, and now in Stroudsburg on Route 611. Pick up your free copy of Stroud's new money saving catalog now during celebration days at Stroud's. America is coming home. Almost there. America is coming home. We head home. America is coming right on time to the good taste of butter. All across America, people are coming home to the pure, natural, wholesome taste of real butter. So simple, so good. America is coming home to the good taste of butter. It's good to be home. Monday, Phil joins an entire audience of members of Concerned Women for America, an organization formed because they feel American family is weakened by the feminist movement. Uh, it was, yes, Ms. Belushi. I, I just wish that I had known about this operation years ago. I had it done when I was 50 years old. And you're wondering now, you know, all those years and you could I have was, been yeah, beautiful. I wouldn't have been so miserable and my whole family and yeah. everybody else. Yeah. I like that. It's the doctor on the end. We put the tape around the, the uh, uh, part Stomach. of the intestine. The tube, the, does that tube ever clog up with tissue? Uh, have you had in the patient? I know the tube comes out. 
But the oh, hole, yeah, hole yeah, is left there. He does the hole right, right here, yeah. Right. I wondered about that too. I like that. No, but it's an excellent question. It's a theoretical possibility, but it has not. Mm -hmm. Usually the stomach, being a digestive organ, will digest the food if it's digestible and allow it to get small enough to pass through. Yeah. Uh, Adolph's meat tenderizer exactly. will help that's if, right. if that should happen. A teaspoon of salt. You're kidding. You eat meat tenderizer to open up your little tummy, is that it? <laughs> I just wondered why it had to be 100 pound minimum in order to do the procedures. It doesn't have to be. That's, that's an excellent it. question. It's absolutely arbitrary. And, and uh, like anything else that gets into print, once it's in print, it's established. Uh, I, I do uh, wonder Make a about judgment it. on each case. A, a judgment in each case should be done. Yes, ma'am. Were you guys fat as babies? Were you fat as babies? I no. was five pounds no. when I was born. So, no, no, but I, I mean in infancy. Were you butterball type kids? No. Not no. me. Does the skin always have to be removed surgically when you lose so much weight, or does your skin naturally contract? I didn't do anything. No, 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 no. I've never had any surgery. It depends a little bit on your age, Bill. The younger people can pick it up. But yeah. Ms. Belucci, do you take vitamin pills? I don't take anything. I'm supposed to, but I just don't. <laughs> what did she say? Where does New Kellogg's Apple Raisin Crisp cereal get its homemade taste? Homemade taste? Does Apple Raisin Crisp get its homemade taste from apples like Grandma baked? Mm, tastes like my recipe. Does Apple Raisin Crisp get its homemade taste from the raisins that sweeten its taste? I love raisins. Do the big crisp flakes with the apples baked on bring on that crunchy taste? Apples baked on the flakes. Where does new Apple Raisin Crisp get its delicious homemade taste? Only from Kellogg's. At Bonas' Supermarket, you'll find fresh-made kishka, pork sausage, faggots, liver pudding, and scrapple, all lower in salt and no preservatives. Bonas' Supermarket, 1230 Wyoming Avenue, 44. Jack Klugman for Steakum All Beef Sandwich Steaks. Don't say it like that. You make it sound like just another celebrity endorsement. I mean, how's anyone supposed to know I've been eating Steakum for years? I wouldn't buy any other brand. Steakum is 100% beef with absolutely no additives, and it tastes so good. Did you know it outsells the leading competition 5 to 1? But if you introduce the commercial like that, how's anyone supposed to know how much I really do love Steak'em? Uh, I think you just told them, Jack. Steak'em all beef sandwich steaks. The Manuscript Society, publishers of the Fine Arts Magazine at Wilkes College, provides a variety of cultural activities to both campus and community. The Student Literary Society invites the public to participate in poetry readings, to attend lectures by writers, and to see the many fine films offered throughout the year, all free of charge. Please join us. Would you model a snake, sell your bra, or give up your zipper? A hundred bucks you gotta deal. Premiering September 17th, join Comico's Fred Travelina and hit the jackpot with the show that puts a price on comedy. And I'll give you $90. Can you do it for $90? I'll give you $100. What it is is diced earthworms. It's the most outrageous new comedy game show of the year. Cash in on the last with anything for money. Coming this fall to WBRE 28. Dr. Dutter, give us your, uh, give us the, briefly, with no, uh, 20 seconds. What was that you said about numbers? If you're what? If, if both parents... If, if one parent is obese, your chance of being... Well, if, if neither if, parent is if obese. If neither of your parents is obese, you have a 10% chance of becoming obese. If one parent is obese, you have about a 50% chance of becoming obese. Services and provided and promotional obese, fees paid by the following. You have an 80% chance of being obese. Here's